All right, hello everyone. Hope you're having a great day. I am so excited for this conversation today. I am here with my friend, mentor, copywriter, sales strategist, Katie Momo, and we're gonna be talking all about how to make friends as an introvert. I know it's a hot topic for a lot of people, so we are gonna peel back our tips and tricks and our kind of stories about making friends as introverts. So Katie, if there's anything you'd like to say about yourself, if I didn't capture quite everything that you do, um, please feel free to introduce yourself. Yeah, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much, Christina, because like these are things that I wish I had known years ago and I'm still learning. And I have moved over 10 times in the last 17 years, like probably 11 or 12. I sort of stopped counting after 10. I was like, I don't want to know anymore. But, you know, every time you move, especially when you make um, some of them have been like really, really big moves and you mm -hmm. have to like kind of start over every single time. Right. So it's hard, especially because like, I mean, I'm so happy to have my business. I have a successful business. Like Christina was saying, um, I'm a sales strategist and a copywriter. So I work online. I work with the most wonderful people like Christina. Um, but that also means that I can be in my house for like days and not leave. <laughs> and you're fine with that, right? <laughs> Literally, like I have my dream life. <laughs> I love it. It also means that I had to just be more intentional about making friends though so it's like yeah what can we do in order to make friends as an introvert when we have this lovely little life at home <laughs> and that's what we're going to be talking about today so yeah many many tips coming your way i'm really excited to share these <laughs> beautiful well let's just jump right in so um just thinking about what are some of the challenges that you've experienced as an introverted woman when it comes to making friends yeah i mean I feel like the fact that I work at home now, and it, this could be a lot of people as well, like even from like, you know, even people who have jobs, sometimes they're doing more remote stuff and just this simple fact of like not being around people and relishing in that <laughs> can be our own barriers. So sometimes the things that we love the most can actually be the thing that like gets in our way. Oh, welcome, good morning. Yes, thank you for, for noticing that we're back. Yeah, we had a check fumble, but that doesn't deter us. We just keep moving. Um, but yeah, it's really realizing that sometimes the things that we love about, you know, the way that we've designed our life. So that way it works for us is like the thing that is actually getting in our way. <laughs> sometimes we do have to like go outside the house. I, I think I can't remember if I mentioned it to you, but there's this like sort of viral memes going around and people like doing their own version of it, who people are there looking for like romantic love. And they're like, turns out I don't find my partner when I'm sitting at home, like watching Netflix. And I'm like, it's the same thing with friends. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> oh, so I, yeah, oh, I, my internet connection is a little slow. So I apologize for any of the awkward pauses here. <laughs> We're good. <laughs> You just look like very artistic, you know, like an impressionist version, version right. of you. <laughs> awesome. So thinking about some of the challenges again, like what has helped you to overcome the challenges with making friends? Yeah. I mean, I guess a lot of it is just some of the actual strategies. Do you want me to dive into them? Now, yeah, let's or do you want to, yeah, let's just roll. Cool. Let's go. Yeah, let's get cool. we're just gonna go high value right away. <laughs> so I have a whole bunch of random tips. Some of them are completely separate from each other. Some of them sort of like crisscross. So we're just gonna go. I have like 10 concrete practical things and then a bunch of like little things that'll just be sprinkled in. And of course, Christina, I know you're amazing at this, like you're so good at this. So like you jump in. <laughs> Whatever okay, because your brilliance is so good. Um, so one thing I know that this sounds like kind of one of the first things we think about, but taking a class can be really good. And it's not just any class, because sometimes when we go to a class, you just go there, you do the thing and you leave. Mm -hmm. Whereas you want to like specifically look for something where you are interacting with people. <laughs> Oh, that's interesting. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And like, well, you have to, like, that's inherent in whatever thing you are doing. And it doesn't even have to be something you're like super interested in. It can even be something that you already know because mm -hmm. your 
main thing is just to like actually meet people who could become a good friend. And if you have like that common ground already, then it's like a really good jumping off point. And I, I really recommend it's something that you can go back to like on a weekly basis, because for us, like it takes us a while to open up. Right. Like, we're just not like, we don't meet someone. We're like, Oh, here's my life story. Like, right. So if it's like you're seeing the same people week after week, we feel a lot more comfortable. It's way easier to open up. You don't have to like go like I tried drop in classes and I was like, this is not working. Like I, it's just like ice, the cold ice every single time. Whereas I keep meeting the same people, then the relationship goes deeper. And one thing that I, I still have friends from classes that I did like over a decade ago, like some of my best friends from dancing, like social dancing. Oh, interesting. Yeah. It's because then you're interacting with people and then you actually like, you know, when you're learning and you're, you're talking, you're dancing together, you're like talking. So I did swing dancing and I mean, that was such a great like incubator for friendships, like really, really good. (laughs) I think that's great. I love the idea of stretch, like being in a container that is for an extended period of time and you get that repeat interaction. (laughs) Uh, I think that's great. (laughs) Take a drink if you need to. But the yeah, it's, thing that sent me over. <laughs> that's a key part of being an introvert. Like you mentioned, we're not typically ones to just like right off the bat, just jump in and, and go deep. We need to nurture that relationship and feel safe and comfortable. So having that container and that space to go back again and again, with the same people is so helpful. It really is. And especially what I found is that if there's sort of like a community built around that topic there's like where it's just like people just naturally get together then it's really great because all of a sudden it's not just necessarily like a whole bunch of new people coming together is that like there's a bunch of people that already know each other and you're just sort of the outsider where people are like hey come in like be part of us and then it's easier because it's not like a whole bunch of new people trying to meet each other where it's just like you know having the same like meeting conversations whereas they're like, oh, like we, we already know each other. So we don't have to do that. We just want to get to know you. So it's cozier and more like loving and like supportive. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. that's, that's, and like social dancing was great for that because like they get together like, usually a couple times a week or a couple times a month. So like there was already that existing community that you're able to just sort of like plug into as opposed to like starting to like claw your way into like a place where everybody's new. <laughs> Right. I think, and maybe it's helpful to even think just for this audience to share some other types of classes. Like you could do a pottery class. I know in my town we've got, it's a six week pottery class. So the same group of people are starting together. They're building um, relationships over that time. So there's like pottery, theater, um, like you said, dancing, maybe cooking classes. Definitely. Um, Yeah. Especially like Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Just thinking, are there any others that you could think of that might be a starting point for some people? Yeah, I would say just anything that has an interactive piece. Like I love the cooking and the pottery idea. Like here we also, and I keep looking at it. I should probably put on my list. They have like pottery and it is like really a community because like you go and like you use the kilns and everything. So you're not just like, you know, going and then leaving and going and then leaving. And then, you know, cooking is great because you have that interaction piece where it's like it becomes a meal and then you just naturally sit down and chat after a meal stuff like that so um another thing that uh may or may not be good depending on who you are but they have some really fun like wine tasting series around here and like that's just like you feel cultured you're just like ah here i am (laughs) having some wine look at the legs on this and like you know it it's sort of like you get to sort of like play the part of being this like oh, right. very person. Yeah. <laughs> so it could really just be anything as long as it's like you, you have that repetition next level is you have a community and you get to like interact with people. It's like, yeah, I love the theater idea. Theater is such a great place to like really create connections. <laughs> awesome. I would, I want to add to that too. And just thinking about like where we can go and this doesn't, it's not necessarily uh, in the container of multiple interactions, but 
um, thinking about what you're interested in, like you're curious about it or you genuinely enjoy, for example, being outside. Maybe you like hiking or walking. Um, and you can find meetup groups. There's Facebook groups. Um, in my area in Virginia, we've got um, Girls Who Hike Facebook group. And they literally say, like, I want to go for a hike this weekend. Who wants to join? And it's a community of women that they already have this common interest. <laughs> like two things, they're women and they like to hike. Three things and they're all in the same area. So using these social media tools to help find your people. It's so handy that we didn't used to have that many years ago, right? <laughs> totally. I and mean, that's a big part of my strategy is exactly mm -hmm. like you said, like leveraging social because there's so many places that we can find people now. Yeah. And it just makes it so much easier. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and awesome. like really similarly is like just joining something. So it doesn't have to be like a class where you're learning something, just like... Mm -hmm. Maybe you're like, I bowled when I was six. I can join bowling. Like, <laughs> it doesn't have to be like super fancy or something that you're particularly good at. Like, I feel like also just mm -hmm. letting ourselves be bad at things and being like, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that is so liberating and like one of the best gifts you can give it yourself. Like, I'm a horrible painter. I like it. I, I super suck at it. This is literally like not paint my number, but it's like a... It's like a coloring book for painting because I'm I like, I don't care. <laughs> I yeah. do it for fun. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's again, embracing that, like in, that curiosity mindset. It's like, just get curious, be okay, be okay to fail and just yes. have some fun. Yeah. Totally. So yeah, if like, you know, if there's a club or a group, something like that, like just exactly like you were saying with like the hiking club and everything, that is so good. Cause then again, it's like that reconnection piece that just makes it so much easier instead of being like, Oh God, I had to meet new people every time. <laughs> right. Right. Awesome. So, so what other tips do you have for us? <laughs> one thing. So I live in a place that I don't actually speak like the most common language around here. So this is a whole other barrier for me. This has been the hardest place I found to make friends because there's like this like actual like technical complexity beyond just like me staying in my house. Um, one thing that I did was I Googled Tinder for friends. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> no, I did it. I was just like, I need a Tinder, but for friends, not for like relationships. And I found there's a couple now, but the one that I actually found some really good friends off of was called Hey Vina. I can okay. chat. Hey Vina. Or it might just be called Vina now. That's an app. There's also um like Bumble has like a BFF version to find friends. Oh, so, cute. <laughs> so cute. So Vina's really nice because it can it works by like um, your your actual location. So you can be like, oh, I want to find people within like you know five miles of me. Because uh, you know if someone's like in the same town, but maybe you live in a huge town and getting there is like two hours. You're like, I'm not gonna take a risk to see like if I like you or yeah. not. I mean, maybe if it's just me. <laughs> <laughs> I probably would. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's so Vina is really nice because it's like very hyper local, but there tends to be less people on it. So that's the thing. Um, okay. Bumble BFF is really good because it's like, it's a way bigger app. There's way more people using it, but it tends to be more only for bigger cities. So it's sort of like, you know, potato, potato depends on where you are. That really, really makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. And I feel like there might be a few more that have sort of come out, but those are the two really big ones. And what's really fun about these is that you can put in your, um, your interests, you know, to be like, oh, I really like crafting, you know, I really love playing guitar, whatever that is. Um, and you can find okay. people with similar interests. And then also there's like fun quizzes you can take to sort of to be like, you know, you don't have to like think about it too hard. You just sort of like answer some questions and it's like, oh, you are like a creative gal or like you are a tech nerd or whatever bumble bfs is interesting i haven't swelled swiped in a while yeah i wish i could i wish it was like if i live in a smaller town now so it's mm -hmm. it's not as useful for me but i keep looking and i'm like oh there's some really cool looking people but they don't live near me <laughs> so yeah BF, bumble bff it's super cool 
Thank you for sharing those. those. I had not heard of either one of them, so I really appreciate that. <clears throat> I'm going to be moving to a new location in the next month. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm a frog in my throat, um, but I will definitely be looking into those apps. I think it's um, really a handy tool. So thank you for sharing that. I'd like to take it one more level. So now yeah. we've found the people. Let's say we found them online or through a meetup group or Bumble BFF. And we are now at the event. What now? What does Katie do when she spots, you know, we have that energy connection with people and what, how do you approach someone new? Do you have any strategies for actually like talking to people? I kind of do. <laughs> I usually sure. just start off. It sounds really silly, but it, it always works. But I love starting off with like a compliment to be like, oh my gosh, like I love your glasses. Like it's just mm -hmm. such an easy opener because people are like, oh my God, thank you so much. And then they might talk about like where they got them. Like um, yep. there's actually one of my clients, she's like, incre she's like into style. Like that's her thing. And yeah. she was, she was showing her glasses that she got at Costco. And I'm like, they're so chic. And she's like, yeah, I got them at Costco. Like no one can believe me. And I'm like, oh my God. Like, you know, it just can like create this sort of like, I, I think of it in terms of like breadcrumbs. Like actually it was, Christine and I were messaging about this where it's right. like, cause sometimes I just like, my mind goes blank. I'm like, I have nothing to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where did the words go? There's nothing in there. <laughs> There's nothing, and like, I'm like, I have no thoughts in my brain. Um, but I just breadcrumb it. Like literally, like I start, start off with a compliment and then they say it's something and I, I, I hear something and I latch onto it. And then I ask a question about that and then I wait for that response. And I ask a question about that thing. So it's just creating this sort of like engine of like question response, question response. Um, because then I, it's like the focus is off me until the point where like I feel like I'm ready to open up, you know? And the right. nice thing is people love talking about themselves when they're like directed to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So they're we're given getting the, the platform. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. So people are like, oh my gosh, they're just such a great listener. Like I really liked Christina. She just like interest people. You become interesting when you are interested in people. So it's like, you can just sort of like flip the script a little bit and people think you're just like the most fascinating person because you right. just gave them the chance to talk about themselves. <laughs> that is so true. And I've been experimenting with that too and just being mindful you know you can be the watcher of what's happening in an interaction so just seeing like oh this is really working like i can tell that they're lighting up just by asking those questions about them and i just want to uh add on to the breadcrumb idea and i think that's so important but I did a small talk Tuesdays in my Facebook group a couple of years ago where we were actually practicing small talk as introverted so women. And one of the things we were talking about is um, providing hooks for the other person to like sink their teeth into. So, so your totally. friend says they've got, they've got cool, you know, you say, I love your glasses. Where are they from? They're from Costco. And then you can say, oh, like, I've never actually been to a Costco or like something that you're not just saying, oh, cool, but then adding a reflective thing. Like, how is what's your relation to that thing that they just said so that you're providing some fuel for them to kind of latch on to. And it's you're you're adding a little bit so that they can. Respond. I love it. <laughs> oh, that's so, so good. And I was just watching, uh, Christina and I were talking about this. I watched something by a psychologist somewhere. I can't remember if it was YouTube or TikTok, but they were talking about like the two different communication styles, whereas some people are question askers and some people are statement makers. And the thing is with a lot of introverts, when someone makes a statement, it feels like we have nowhere to go. We're both like, what do I do with that? But in their minds, they make a statement in order for you to respond. So that's actually like an invitation for you to respond to whatever they said. And sort of knowing that I was like, oh, that's so good to know. Like it just sort of like opened the door in my mind to yeah. be like, oh, they're not shutting down or shutting me down. This is their invitation to be like, your turn, <laughs> you know? Yeah, and you I thought that was really helpful. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I can respond with a question because it it's how I keep the engine going. <laughs> yeah, that that's definitely my strategy too, is just asking a lot of questions. And so <laughs> I think the more that we get practice doing this, and again, not being afraid 
to be awkward or be uncomfortable or fail, whatever that is, you know, um, and just trying and get getting curious and experimenting with different types of questions. I know like open ended questions are always helpful. So if so you're meeting good. someone new, it's like, avoiding the quick yes or no. And there's work that you can do to prepare yourself for this. Like literally, I mean, you can Google it. You could probably do that right now and ask what are some good open-ended questions for small talk. And then you've got this little library. You could even put it in notes on your phone and you just see them, like, you know, open that up regularly, get familiar with some of those really good open-ended questions that also resonate with you that, that you feel comfortable asking. Totally. Yeah. That's such a good idea. It's like when you get it, the rhythm of it in your brain, it's so much easier to pull it out and you don't, you get less of the like, like blank page. You're like, I don't know what to say because it's just like, you're like, what do I like? What are my go-tos? You're like, ah, okay. I'm going to pull this one out of my hat and use this question. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, I wanted to add something else too about when we are in a conversation is the importance of listening actively. So our introvert brains are like the arrows are always pointing in. We are like so focused on our own thoughts and things that are happening in our own brain and ourselves where that's how we operate. It's our, our brains are set up that way. But when we're in conversation, meeting someone, it's like consciously trying to turn those arrows <laughs> that redirect the attention outward. It's making this all about them. Like, noticing their eye color, their gestures, their facial expression, just totally like flip the arrows. This is not about you. This is like getting to know them. So just thinking totally. about that, like, okay, this is really about them. <laughs> and also it makes it easier to like determine who is like real friend potential. Cause there was like, you know, acquaintances and then there's like, right. meh, and then there's like, yes. So <laughs> it's like, we need to know them. Like I always say like, you know, when you go to an interview, it's not just you being like, please hire me. You're like, do I want to work here? And it's the same thing where it's like, I need to know enough about you to know, like, do you qualify to be my friend? You know? <laughs> and then it sort of like makes it easier to feel like, you know, you need to know about them in order to know like, hey, is there something here? Yeah. Yes. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> so Any other tips that you'd like to share? Yeah, we kind of touched on it a little bit um, earlier when you were talking about the hike group. But yeah, Facebook groups, local Facebook groups can be so helpful, especially if it's like local plus interest. Like you had, you know, people in your area doing hiking with women. Mm -hmm. So it's like a triple threat of like goodness. That can be yeah. such a good thing to do. So, so, so helpful. Um, and also searching Facebook events and meetup and event rights for events and activities that you want to do. Cause there might be things happening in town that you just don't know about. Like that happens to me all the time. And I find it after I'm like, Oh, I would have loved yeah. to do that. Uh. <laughs> um, so like, you know, just searching for things that, that interest you. Cause again, like the people showing up there, you have some sort of common ground already. Right. Like, you know, yeah. my friend is really into like rock, punk music and she goes to like music festivals and she's met like amazing people there because that's like her thing she tells me about her music her like what are they called like you know they're like music festivals where they like three mm -hmm. days long and camping and it's like all dirty and I'm like I'm so glad you enjoy that because it sounds horrible <laughs> like, horrible but yeah good for you really happy <laughs> um oh go on did you have something um, to add yeah I was just gonna go on to my next thing is like go to maybe a co-working space for a day that can be really great like if you do like remote work or if you're allowed to like you know venture outside of the office or whatever it can be a really good way to just like you know get things done but also mm -hmm. being in a space that like you know you might be able to chit chat with someone at the water cooler or whatever there's definitely like some really cool um co-working spaces that have cropped up like i think especially like since the pandemic so like they're there for to, to be used basically. So you can take advantage of them. And sometimes they have like day passes. Sometimes they have like an hourly pass. Sometimes if you're really into it, then you can get like a monthly pass. And that can be really good because then you go and like see the same people all the time. But that's like a really good reason <laughs> to get pants on, real pants and get out of the house <laughs> if you have that problem like I do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, no real pants. <laughs> Another thing that I like to do, because instead of having to approach people, 
I like mm -hmm. to make it easy for someone to approach me. <laughs> Ooh, tell me more about that. <laughs> yeah, I, I wear something that I call like a talk trigger, which Ooh. gives people a reason to talk about something. So I noticed that I was doing this to other people. Like um, I was out at the mall a few months ago and there was a guy, he was just like checking us out and like, you know, to pay and he was like looked really bored and kind of sad and he was wearing a snoopy shirt like i had a little snoopy on it from peanuts right. and i was like oh snoopy i love snoopy and mm. the guy just like lit up he's like oh, i love snoopy so much and he just like it just like made his day right like he sort of felt yeah. like seen and heard <laughs> but it gives people like something worth commenting on right where people are like oh yeah like that that's cool that's different <laughs> Something different. I definitely use that too. I always wear like interesting earrings. And you do. Uh, yeah. You're the most amazing earrings. <laughs> I love earrings. It's like, it feels so uncomfortable if I ever forget to wear them, but I can tell you almost every time that's an exaggeration, but uh, many times when I check out at a grocery store or something, the clerk or the cashier will actually comment on my earrings and we get into a really nice conversation and it's a good it's just nice practice in that that kind of small talk setting. You know, it's going to be a quick interaction. There's a line of people behind me, but it's still getting comfortable with how to respond when someone says that. And you can totally. again, drop that little piece for them to chew on. <laughs> totally. Yeah, exactly. You're just putting it out there. And it, it's amazing. Like it, it can be so simple and it can be something that you really like, you know, like it makes you yeah. feel good to wear that thing. And you're like, yeah, I'm going to wear it because it makes me feel good. And then it gives people a reason to talk to me. So it's like double duty. <laughs> so here is an app that I've literally just started. I mean, I signed up for it a couple of years ago, but I didn't do anything with it. But I've only started actually actively using it maybe like in the past three weeks. And it's been amazing. Um, Nextdoor. So it's like a really oh, yeah. hyper local app. And I posted um, like three weeks ago. I It was like 1130 at night. You know, when you're like not sleeping, you're just like, man, I have this idea. I'm just going to throw it out there. So I <laughs> put on there, I was like, hey, would any other ladies in the area be interested in getting together for a walk? And I was like, maybe I'll get like one or two people. And there were like 36 people were like, this is such a great idea. <laughs> oh, they were waiting for you. <laughs> right? Like I was waiting for someone to do this because they're like, there's mm -hmm. walking groups everywhere, but nothing around here. And I was like waiting and waiting. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm just going to see. And the mm -hmm. cool thing is that like, you can just start really organically like that. Like it was literally like just off the cuff. Mm -hmm. um, and when you organize an event, again, you don't have to like make, make your small talk. People just come to you and they're like, oh, you're Katie, you know? And then it just becomes really easy because they're like, thank you so much for doing this, blah, blah, blah. And I mean, it's so simple. Like, I mean, I had 36 people interested. Only six people showed up because they were the ones who said that they could, they were available at that time. But people are like, let's do it again, you know? So now all of a sudden I've created like a event and I've created a group in next door. So it's like, and I'm posting on Instagram about it. So now it's a whole thing, um, which is really cool. Yeah. And it's so funny because I bought these pastel shoes. So it's like another talk trigger, like my little pastel running shoes. And I right. told everyone, like, because it's really cold here. Everyone's wearing big black jackets. And I was like, look for my pastel shoes. And people would come up to me and they'd look at the shoes. and they go, Katie, pastel Katie. <laughs> <laughs> and I was at the grocery store yesterday. So we had our first walk last week. I was at the grocery mm -hmm. store yesterday. And one of the ladies recognize her she was one of the like six people who came and she looked at me and she goes oh, pastel katie <laughs> that's your new nickname <laughs> my new nickname <laughs> but it was so easy because like i didn't have to do anything really like i made two posts and that yeah. was it and there were two people there who i was like you are genuine friend potential like you are legit <laughs> and other yeah. people are just nice yeah right right so what I'm hearing here is don't be afraid to start the group yourself. If it's not there and you want a women who knit and hang out with their cats and drink wine, then make the group and your people will show. <laughs> totally. Yeah. And you don't even have to like, like I just made a post just to be like, is anyone interested in this? And right. that got me to create the event, to create the mm -hmm. group. So don't feel like you had to go all in. Just right. put feelers out there and then 
go from there. And it makes it feel really like that takes the pressure off. People really like it because they feel like it's not formal either. So it's like it works right. on every level. So yeah, it's really cool. You can totally do it. And what I love about Nextdoor is like you can choose to post just in your neighborhood. So you can make friends that you can just go for a stroll and go for coffee with. Or you can post in mall, like it'll can like make like the radius. So it can be oh. reach like more people, but they're still pretty close. So yeah, it's really powerful for that. And that is like a newer thing. Awesome. So use the next door app, just throw out a feelers question to see if anybody would be interested and go from there. Totally. Oh, and Katie, gold. <laughs> I have another one which may or may not apply. So because I use Instagram for business. So like I have an Instagram account, but I didn't want to use it for like finding people locally. Cause like my clients are literally all over the world. And I'm like, it would just get really confusing. So I created an account for like my local area. Um, and then I just hashtag the crap out of it with like any hashtag that would be representative of this area and one of the ladies actually found my walk and came to the walk she's like one of the ones I was like you were a legit friend quality yeah. from this Instagram post so yeah like creating something that is like really dedicated towards this is like yeah mm -hmm. super super helpful yeah it takes intentionality friends you know sometimes friends will just magically appear in your life but it gets harder I think as we get older so actually being intentional and thoughtful and putting the effort in is um, it's what's going to make it happen. <laughs> totally. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it really is a muscle, you know, like the first few times are going to be like really stressful <laughs> and that's okay. But it's like, I feel like it's going to the gym. You know, the first time you go to the gym, you're like, Oh God, it's so hard. And then you like, it's like, you know, you just have to like build up to it and then you do it a few times and you're like, Oh, I can go to the gym and it just feels amazing after. And I feel like energized and like all this sort of stuff. So it's like, yeah, just give yourself the chance to go through that. Like those first few times that are like, like the most uncomfortable, but it gets better from there. And you, once you're going through it, you're like, it just gets easier and easier from here. So yeah. Yeah. The resistance kind of softens with each time. <laughs> Big time. <laughs> Beautiful. Any other tips? And then we do have a question from someone from um, my Facebook group, if we wanted to answer that, but anything else that you wanted to share right now? I think those are the big thing. We covered a lot of different ways that you can meet people and a lot of like some of the mental reframes we have to go through <laughs> in order to allow ourselves to make that happen. And yeah. And also for anyone who's thinking about working with Christina, she's brilliant like oh my goodness this is just like tiny little speck of the iceberg of what she does it's just like she's phenomenal she knows exactly what we're going through <laughs> as introverts and she can she can really really help like get your confidence up and just give yourself that like boost that you need to make it feel easy to do the things that you want to do <laughs> I so appreciate you. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> You're welcome. I mean, I see the, I see what people have said about you and just like the results that people have gotten. I'm like, Oh God, it's amazing. Like, I wish I had you so many years ago. Like it would have been Aww. transformational. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Um, so let's do this question and it is, what are some ways that an introverted person can be comfortable and open to talking to someone that they just met specifically in environments that are not necessarily our favorite? So loud bars, places that are full of people screaming at the top of their lungs <laughs> or very overstimulating situations. Um, what are some ways that an introvert can kind of be more comfortable in those spaces and meet new people? Any any thoughts on that? <laughs> it was so, such a great question, first of all. Thank you so much. And it's hilarious when Christina messaged me that. And my first thought was like, oh, God, don't go. <laughs> don't go. Run. <laughs> Stay home. Close the door. It'll close the lock. No, I'm <laughs> don't listen to me. I, I can be hardcore introvert sometimes. But I totally get sometimes you got to go. You, it's like a work thing or like your partner's like, I really want to go to like the sports bar. And you're like, oh, great. Um, but yeah, for, first of all, Christina had so many great tips on this. So I think she's probably going to be the, the best one to, to answer that, um, to start off with. And then I had some tips sort of to jump in after that. So I will let you take the stage because you had some great thoughts. Oh, I think you might be frozen. Oh, you're back. I'm back. 
<laughs> Too bad. I was going to say, I think you should take, because mine were sort of playing off of yours because you had some great tips. So I was like, you should take the stage. <laughs> oh, and then I froze. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was amazing. <laughs> oh, cool. Okay. So my thoughts on this, there, there's some actual like physical things that we can do and some mindset work. So they're in no particular order, but just when we're going into a new setting, I think it's really important to check our mindset. So the mindset of meeting new people and going into a space that we know that we don't necessarily love. Um, but so let's, let's say I know that I'm going into a bar. So I'm, so I'm going to a bar and it's going to be loud. <laughs> Christina, an I was going to say, like, imagine the, the peril of the universe where Christina has to go to a bar. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I can go in, I've got two options here or more, but two main ones. So I can go in with the mindset of, I hate crowded bars. I hate this. Or I can go in with the mindset of, this is a good place for me to get more comfortable out of my comfort zone. I'm curious to see how this goes and who I can meet. So it's just a simple shift of like, I can walk in wearing the hat of I am going to hate this, or I can walk in like, I'm curious to see what happens here. And I'm willing to get uncomfortable to meet someone new. So it's like these reframes that we can put on before we actually go into that setting. Um, Such a good, yeah. Because if we go in like feeling like I hate this and nothing's going to happen, nothing's good going to happen out of this, like we're only setting ourselves up with that perspective. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's, what do you think will attract? <laughs> Things that yeah. go well. <laughs> um, and then when it's like, let's say you do actually see someone, you, you know, we have that like radar of someone that is interesting. They look like they could be a good, um, a good match for us. So um, actually, approaching them and if it's getting like really loud and you just can't hear each other it's like physically uncomfortable it's okay to say i need a break like introverts get we get overstimulated and our batteries need recharging so it's perfectly okay to say like please excuse me for a moment like you can literally just go to the bathroom and sit there and do some deep breathing and then come back when you're feeling refreshed or you could ask them like hey would you like to step outside i want to get some fresh air and if it's not like pouring rain, <laughs> but, you know, using the space to actually like invite a, a new uh, environment. So maybe you are able to step outside. And if you're not, just give yourself that break if, and give yourself that permission to take a break when you're feeling like, oh my gosh, that was a lot of talking or I'm overwhelmed and I don't know the words to say, like go to the bathroom and regroup. Just take a moment to regroup yourself. Yeah, I've definitely done the bathroom trick a lot. <laughs> And even if you need to check your like, you know, your open questions that you have in your little notes app or something, that's a really good thing that you can do. You can recenter yourself. Then before you go back out, you can like touch base and be like, okay, what am I going to check my next? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I think like at the end is kind of like the what next and remembering that it's pretty unlikely that we're just going to be like instant friends and like besties sharing everything. That's unfortunately, it's not how it works in life, but we need to like nurture the relationship. So don't be afraid to say, you know, I really enjoyed connecting with you. Would you like to um, swap like social media or you want to swap contact information? And mm -hmm. you're, you're just asking that like permission, like, would you like to stay in touch? And then that's kind of a, an opening where you can then pick an environment that you like. So then you can ask to go for a walk together or to a quiet coffee shop or just go for a hike, you know, wherever it is that is going to be um, that environment that sets you up to feel more comfortable. And that's where we can build the relationship even more. So it's like t knowing that this is going to be a journey. <laughs> it's not totally. likely going to happen all at once, but <laughs> you can take the initiative to set the next date in a place that is more comfortable. I love that. Yeah. And what I think is really important is like not only just making the connection, because like we've all been there. Let's just say we're connecting on Instagram. Be like, hey, are you on Instagram? Like I'm on there. What's your name? What's your handle? And mm. then you add them and then you can't find them again because you're like, right. I don't know. So while you're actually talking to them, like DM them, be like, hey, it's Katie. Because like, you know, maybe you also have a different name, like your handle might not be your name. So then it's really confusing because you're like, 
you know, you're like, oh, her name was Jen, but on Instagram, her name is like Hot Mama 97. <laughs> and you're like, I don't know where to find her. So then <laughs> you just like actually send them a DM. So then it's in your yep. DMs. So first right. of all, you've made that connection. So you now you don't have to like leave and go home and be like, do I send a message right away? Yeah. Wait three days. <laughs> you know, you're not like caught up in that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, then it's like you've already made the connection. You you can find them again. Um, you know, you can touch base the next day to be like, hey, are your ears still ringing? Because mine are. <laughs> right. <laughs> it was really loud last day. Um, and then use that like as a touch point that you can continue the conversation. So it feels like you are, you know, keeping things going as opposed to being like, now I have to start things up again. And when it feels like, you know, you had that connection, then like, pfft, and then we have to right. like re energize it. So like continuing is so much easier. Right. Oh, I love that tip. Great. So when you're when you're actually sitting there with them, send them the message and then you've got it. And then you can take that initiative to set up the next meeting. And that's that is the importance. Like I really want to empower everyone listening. Like it takes effort to make friends. So stop it just does. wishing and be the one like really be the one that says would you like to go for a walk and just know like everybody is craving social connection like every person needs it to thrive i just read something um in a study that said loneliness and so social isolation um can be as harmful as smoking 15 cigarettes a day so it's like not good for our health to be isolated to be lonely and people like we genuinely as humans want that connection. So be the one to take the step to make the offer to set up the, the walking date or the group. Um, yeah, you've got the power. Yes. You can do it. If I did it, trust me, <laughs> like I don't, I can literally be at home for a week straight. If I can do it, you can totally do that. You can totally do it. And yeah, it, it just like Christina was saying, it does take work, but it's so rewarding. It, it and, and it does feel good. You know, when you meet the right people, like, yes, it's tiring, but also you feel uplifted in other ways because like Christina was saying, you know, it is such a key thing for our health and i always remind myself of that to be like i have to prioritize this for my health not just because right. society says so but it's like yeah i i feel i feel like something is lacking when i don't have friends so mm -hmm. um yeah it's just something that we can do and there are people literally waiting for you to do this so that's what's really cool is that like you can just put a post out there be like hey is anyone interested in doing this and just yep. see and go from there and it can be like feel really cozy and easy and light <laughs> yes yes oh my gosh i just had a, a thought fly in uh, as they do and it was oh about moving somewhere new so when you're moving somewhere new this is an opportunity for you to kind of shed any old things about yourself that maybe you were conforming to an old expectation of yourself or from a group of friends that maybe weren't super aligned and maybe they're not your energy anymore. Maybe you don't love to go binge drinking and <laughs> you actually want to knit at home or knit with friends. So when you move, you can really like take this as an opportunity to shed the old skin, shed the old things and really show up authentically. And that's what it's all about. Like if you want to make really genuine good friends, which I know introverts want that. It's like, we don't need a ton of friends. We don't need 50 friends in a photo on a girl's weekend. Like two really good friends is like, that makes, fills my heart. So it's like, that's enough for me. That's great. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> I just lost my, my train of thought there. Um, it's gone, but I don't forget what I was saying. It was gold. What you were saying was absolute gold though. Yeah. This is so, oh, so good. <laughs> awesome. oh, so anything else that you wanted to share? And I'll also open it up. You, um, Anyone watching in the Facebook group, you can add a comment and we can answer any last. We've got time for maybe one or two questions. Oh, there's then, comments. oh I didn't even see them. I just saw the first one, I think. Yeah. Enjoy walking, being outdoors. Yes. Great one camping. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> this is interesting. Oh, I saw two. OK. Ladies, thanks so much. <laughs> The introvert is so bad at going out making friends. Yes, me too. That's why I have to like literally create strategies and a checklist for myself. <laughs> Good intentions, but often say a safe cocoon. Yes. Yes. Oh, oh, exactly what 
you were saying, Christina, about like being intentional and like moving gives you a fresh start. This is yeah. so true because some of my my girlfriend, she's lived in the same town that we grew up with. And some of the people we went to school with kind of suck. Like they're not nice people. And yeah. I, I mean, I just, I was just like, bye girl. Like even after your high school, I was like, I don't need you in my life. I'm not into that. Right. Um, but she stayed friends with them out of habit. And you don't have to stay friends with people out of habit. Like oh, it was that. nice for me because I moved. So I had to be intentional. Like it gives right. you that gift. But you can also do it in your own hometown too. You can just be like, you know what? I'm going to make some new friends. Right. Yeah. So like which, whichever way you do it, like you can totally do this. Um, oh, I love, I don't see her name, but I'm just seeing the struggling out of partying, benching and clumbing phase into my relaxing traveling and going to the beach and hiking mm -hmm. phase. Oh, this is going to be an amazing phase for you. I'm so excited. Yeah. For you. <laughs> so exciting. <laughs> Yay. This is so great. <laughs> I just remembered the second part of my thought there about being authentic. So when, so when we are showing up authentic, like just doing a check, are you trying to fit into a mold, like what society says you should be and really show up as yourself? Because that those are how you make your close, real friendships is by being real and showing like being vulnerable, too. And yeah. now that kind of goes into conversation as well. And I've I've had a recent experience of this, of telling someone that I felt nervous and people like people <laughs> that are human and have vulnerabilities. Like that's what makes us relatable. And totally. it's okay to say like, I don't love, you know, I don't love this setting or I don't, you know, I don't always know the words to say. I have like, literally said that when I met someone, you know, I'm not always quick to respond on the fly, but I'll get back to you and it's going to be great. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Give yourself that permission. I, yeah. so one of the things I like to talk about is just like, being okay with like your dorkiness, like whatever, whatever weird thing you're into. Like my friend, she friggin' loves, what's it called? Star Wars. I don't know anything about Star Wars, but I'm like, you go girl. I have, um, yes. I have oh. my little musketeer because I love like <laughs> Disney stuff. So I just like wear it on my bag and it just, it makes me happy and it puts it out there that I'm like, yeah. And then other people see things and they're like, mm -hmm, yeah. Or I, I was at the bookstore the other day and the lady had a lanyard, like for her, like, swipey card that had Dobby, mm -hmm. the character Dobby on that. Oh, and yeah. I was like, oh, I love Dobby. And I was like, my dog looks like Dobby sometimes. And she's like, you should dress him up. And I'm like, I try, but he doesn't like it. And she's like, then he's not a free elf. Like you can have these amazing, like, like weird niche interactions that like are going to sound insane to everyone else, but you guys get it. And it's like, so it. cool. <laughs> yes. I love that. Thank you. I right. love that we have people doing posting in local Facebook, Facebook groups and stuff. Oh Yay! my God, yes, 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 yes. Oh, I'm so celebrating excited. you. I can't see the actual name for who said that, but um, I'm so proud of you for posting in that group. That's so, so good. I love, okay, um, I've made one connection. They reach out um, each week to hang out. That's amazing. Uh, you're flattered, but it's too much for me. Yeah, I, that would be too much for me, yeah. Totally. Oh, that's a good question in here. Yeah. I mean, I would probably just say like, hey, you know what? I'm actually busy, you know, the next couple weekends. But like, hey, how about like, are you free April 14th or something? So that way you're literally just saying like you are busy, even if busy means sitting at home. They don't need to yeah. know that. Yeah. That would be my strategy. What What about you, Christina? Yeah, it is like similar, just setting those energetic boundaries and like, it's okay to say I'm not, that doesn't work for me. <laughs> like that doesn't work ah. for my schedule and it's okay. You, you are entitled to your time and your energy space. So, you know, I'd love to hang out. I'm like every other weekend works great for me. Yeah. You know, I'd love to yeah. hang out. Definitely. But every other Hashtag weekend. Boundaries. <laughs> Hashtag boundaries. Yeah. I've got boundaries every Thursday night. A lot of people know this about me already, but it's date night. So I don't, there's no phone there's no communication we always have date night on thursday night so i love that oh my god <laughs> uh i feel this phase transitions are beautiful space for growth yes r and r hiking beaching dog walking oh my gosh this is all amazing um now we have a great question when i'm in a new setting um uh, i do I think, I think it's maybe how do I approach someone and introduce myself? That's a great question. Oh my gosh. Do you want to start off, Christina? 
Oh, okay. <laughs> so, or I can start. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, go for it. I'll let you, you take the reins if you've got something. I, I think I've talked about this already, but I usually don't start off with introducing myself. I start off <laughs> with a compliment. A compliment. <laughs> a compliment always works. Any, any random thing, anything that they're wearing, mm -hmm. whatever, doesn't matter. Um, or, you know, find a common ground if they're like, you know, if they're in, in a little black dress, you know, be like, oh, that's such a cute dress. I actually was just looking at another little black dress. Uh, where, where did you get that? You know, if like right. just finding common ground or something to talk about that's less about you mm -hmm. and more about them um, instead of like, you know, we've all been to like weird networking events. So you go up and you're like, hello, I am Katie and I am a coffee, like all that weird stuff. So like, yeah, <laughs> I just flip the switch and make it all about them and they feel flattered and they're like, oh, and it's an easy way for them to talk, which gets the ball rolling. And then yeah. you don't have to like think about too much. And then after you've been chatting, you'd be like, oh, by the way, like I haven't even introduced myself. Like my name's Katie, by the way. And then, yeah, you can just go with that. Yeah, I would definitely echo that same thing. I That's my strategy is the compliment. Notice one interesting thing about them. And then, you know, we were, again, turning the arrows from inside to outside and all about that. Redirecting. Right. <laughs> I hope that helps. Let us know if, if that's helpful at all or if there's any other questions that come up. Yeah. That is like, it always basically like always works, especially if you, um, if you heard the, where Christina was talking about like open questions, it's like, once you get into like the rhythm of the open questions, it just like, it comes so easily and just feels really natural. Um, you just sort of like need to like imprint them in your head. So that way you can like pull them out when you need to. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's just, it's repetition. It's practice. It's like learning a new language. <laughs> hundred percent for us. Yeah, it is learning a new language. I come from a family of like hardcore extroverts. So they're always like, Oh, Katie's like a delicate little flower. Um, my, my nickname as a child was house mouse. Cause I just want to like stay home and read. Aww. And I'm like, I am still the same. I love it. Well, this has been so fun. Um, if anyone has any um, final questions or if you want to share like a key takeaway or commit to doing something, um, I encourage you to share it in the chat and we'll start we'll start making friends. Um, so how can people reach you, Katie? Um, Katie is a fabulous copywriter. She actually just helped with my website, which will be updated very soon. And she's just brilliant. So um, I, if you have a business or you need support with copywriting or just want to connect with Katie because she's an amazing human, um, how what's the best way for people to connect with you? Yeah, that sounds good. So if you are on Instagram, I'm hello Katie Momo. So you can come over and follow me. Um, so I'm usually on there a couple times a week. I'm again, it's introverted. So like, you know, sometimes I'm I ghost for a while and then sometimes I show up three times a day. It depends on what sort of like <laughs> mood I'm in. Um, but that's part of the, the thing is that I make it work for me. So yeah, I'm on there. If you are on LinkedIn, you can find me. I'm the only uh, Katie Momo on LinkedIn. So I've been showing up there more recently. So that's been a new adventure for me. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, those are the main places. I'm going to commit to opening myself up to new people experiences. I'm not scared. Do it scared. Do it scared. Do it yeah. scared. <laughs> Yes. Awesome. Yes. yes. And Christina has an amazing ETF, uh, EFT, sorry. ETF. I work with both ETFs and EFT. So I always like have to really, really overthink it. She has an amazing video um, that you should watch maybe before going out. So that way you can just like recenter yourself and feel really calm. Um, yeah. So good. I will definitely share that. Thank you. It's a good reminder. So EFT is the emotional freedom technique. It's it's tapping and it helps clear out the blocks and the fear and reset our energy so that we can go in feeling fresh and calm and confident. <laughs> yeah. And it, when you once you've moved and started off your breath work again, I want to join. <laughs> Because for anyone who hasn't done breath work, oh my God, it's magical. And you will feel so, you'll feel like a sparkly unicorn after you will feel like so good and amazing. And it's like the perfect thing to do, especially before you like go out and have a social interaction to put yourself in that like 
vibe. In the vibe, yes, to attract your soulmate friends. Yes, exactly. <laughs> awesome. So well, we thank you, thank committing. you, thank you for being here, Katie, and thank you. Oh, oh, I think we froze. I think we froze. I don't know if I'm frozen. I know you're frozen. Hmm. Hmm. Let me just see. Are you on Messenger? <laughs> I think you are frozen. I'll message that and just see. Um, Christina is amazing with breath work. Yes. Oh my gosh, she is. And EFT is, is awesome. Yeah, it is so good for anyone who hasn't tried it yet or if you just need a reminder. I mean, I know I needed the reminder sometimes. Um, but even if like you are out at an interaction, like you're, you are at that bar where it's like really loud and you're just like, just need a few minutes go sit in the bathroom and like do do some tapping and just like oh i feel even just good doing that <sighs> it's so good it is so powerful so yeah you can watch christina's video and it'll just give you like the steps of what you can do and it's just absolutely wonderful um she's still frozen oh i don't think she's seen my messages um, so we can just keep talking until maybe she comes on or she gives me, oh, I think she's left. Okay. Well, you know what? I guess we're going to end this wonderful call. Thank you so much for all of your comments. I only just saw it right at the end. <laughs> I'm also in the group and then, oh, she's back. Yay. Okay. I was just going to wrap things up because I'm like, I'm not sure if she's going to be able to get back in. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know. I'm just having, struggling with all the tech problems today, but thank you. That's fine. We're good. <laughs> Beautiful. So thank you. And thanks, Katie, for wrapping. But I appreciate everyone here. And I appreciate you, Katie, so much. Hope everyone Wonderful. has a great day. Thank you so much for having me. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Bye.